we celebrate Mother's Day, I want you to learn about a woman in the Bible who chose to serve the Lord and believe on Him as her Savior. Take your Bible, if you would, please, and turn to Luke's Gospel. We're going to be looking this morning at Luke chapter 7, and I'd like to read along with you from Luke chapter 7, beginning in verse number 36. We're going to be preaching down through verse 50, but we'll read several verses and then jump down to verse 50 for our scripture reading this morning. Luke chapter 7, as we continue our series, Only Jesus, we're going to find that only Jesus can forgive our sin. Luke chapter 7, verse 36. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now, when the Pharisee, which had bidden him, saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he said, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors, the one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him the most? Simon answered and said, I suppose he that he forgave the most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered, in, entered into thine house, and thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with her tears, and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman hath kissed my feet even to this moment. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with oil. Wherefore I say unto her, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. She loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he saith unto her, thy sins be forgiven thee. I want you to think about that phrase today, thy sins be forgiven thee. No church can forgive sin. No man can forgive sin. Only Jesus Christ can forgive our sin. Today we're going to learn about a woman who found forgiveness in Jesus Christ. I want you to think about it with me. You know, moms have a lot of burdens and uh, many times carry with them thoughts and regrets like any other person. And moms have a desire to be remembered as one that is faithful in this life. I heard about some little children who had ideas about moms, and uh, they were sharing those ideas in school and writing out some notes for their mothers. One little boy named Robert, he wrote, he said, Mom, I got you a turtle for Mother's Day. I hope you like the turtle better than the snake I gave you last year. And uh, maybe you have a boy like that at home today. Eileen wrote, Dear Mother, I wish Mother's Day wasn't always on Sunday. It would be better if it were on Monday, so we didn't have to go to school. Now, there's a real thinker, Eileen. She was thinking, wasn't she? Diane, she wrote, I hope you like the flowers I got you for Mother's Day. I picked them myself when Mr. Smith wasn't looking. And then finally, uh, there was one from Carol. Dear Mother, here are two aspirins. Happy Mother's Day. Well, I think a lot of our moms have needed some aspirin, some Tylenol in recent days. Some have been homeschooling. Others have been having to shop creatively or maybe put up with a cranky husband. Uh, and today we honor you and we thank you. And today we look in the Bible to a woman who had burdens. Uh, she was an outcast of society. She was not appreciated. She knew that she had her shortcomings. And yet no one cared for her soul except the Lord Jesus Christ. And I see in this passage a wonderful truth, and that is that only Jesus can truly forgive our sin. The power of sin was upon this woman. It's upon every person. And yet this day she came to know the one who could truly make a difference. In the passage before us this morning, we see a man named Simon. He was a Pharisee. He had invited Jesus to come to a meal. And uh, into this same meal walked a woman just off the street. 
she came into a gathering as an uninvited guest. And as she came into this dinner, uh, you must understand the culture of the Middle East. The dinner was not necessarily a, a private event. Oftentimes, these types of courtyards were opened, and people would come in like this. Uh, they would make their way in for the meal and maybe some fellowship. But not a woman like this. She had a reputation. Uh, she was a woman that was not uh, necessarily welcome to fellowship like these people were enjoying in the Pharisee's home. She was not wanted in the courtyard of the Pharisee. And so I want you to see this right off the bat. We see in the scripture this morning a sinful woman that is coming in to this gathering. And the Bible tells us she was a woman that was in the city, verse 37, which was a sinner. Now, lest we get a wrong idea or become judgmental, let's remember that the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the Holy Spirit says specifically here that this woman was a sinner. She was someone that had this reputation. She had a regretful past, uh, a past that had been demo devoted really to sin. Uh, it had given her a reputation. And uh, what a tragic reputation indeed. <clears throat> the story is told of a young woman who had accepted Christ as Savior. And she sat down with a membership committee at a church. And they were going to talk with her about being baptized and becoming a member of the church. And they said to the young woman, they said, were you a sinner before you received Jesus as your Savior? And she immediately said, well, yes, I was. And they said, well, are you still a sinner? And uh, what real change have you had in your life? And the young woman said, you know, I don't really know how to explain it, except I used to be a sinner running after sin. Now I'm a sinner running away from sin. That's a great way to describe the difference that Christ makes. No longer are you running to sin. You're running from sin. But this woman had a reputation as someone that had been running to sin. And the Bible says in Galatians 3 and 22, But the scripture hath concluded all are under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. You see, the cross is of none effect unless we would say of ourselves what is said of this woman, that we are all sinners and that we all were running after sin until we met Jesus Christ. And so this woman indeed had a regretful past, but she had a repentance in her heart. She was a repentant woman. And the Bible tells us that when she come to see Jesus, that she brought an alabaster box filled with ointment. And when she saw Jesus, the Son of God, she wept. She wept so much that she washed his feet with her tears. And with her hair, she wiped the ointment upon his feet as an act of amazing sacrifice, an act of love, an act of acknowledging, you are the Lord, you are worthy of my worship. And so, as the Pharisee may have invited Jesus to impress him, as the Pharisee may have had uh, his pride welling up within him, this woman, knowing that she was a sinner, repentfully and humbly worshipped the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God today for women, women like we heard testify a moment ago, even in this very service, who love the Lord and count it an honor to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, God took this woman and God was already working on her heart. She had a heart of repentance and one can only imagine how she felt when she came into the presence of Jesus. One day we'll see the Lord Jesus face to face. She brought this alabaster box which contained uh, ancient ointments and, and uh, uh, I think of so many today that uh, that even moms today that use ointments and oils and sometimes will uh, have one that's for sinuses and one that's for this ailment and, and, uh, and always in the sense of comforting their family and, uh, and helping someone. And in this particular case, the oil was not necessarily for healing or for uh, the aroma of the oil in particular. It was a sign of this is what I have that is valuable. And I want to pour it out in worship to my Lord Jesus Christ, to the Lord Jesus Christ. It is interesting that in this story this morning, the woman never spoke. She never spoke a word. The Bible tells us that she stood behind him, verse 38, weeping. 
She wiped the oil with the hairs of her head. She kissed his feet, but she never said a word. You know, the great thing about moms and the great thing about women who know the Lord is that we love them not necessarily for what they say, but for the way that they serve, for the way that they illustrate and live out their love within their family each and every day. Oh, you see, Jesus, before this event, had said something that you've heard before. And the Bible tells us about it in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Jesus had said outside of this home, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon, me and, upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I can imagine this woman who was well aware of her sin, who was not really wanted at the party, this woman that knew she was a sinner coming in, coming into the Lord, and she had heard him say those words, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. She knew that sin was not light, it was heavy. The things that she had done were heavy upon her. And when she saw this one who said, I'll lift your burden, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. When she saw Jesus, she was so grateful. She didn't say a word. She just bowed before him and began to sacrifice to him. I hope you still have in your heart that understanding that Jesus loves you and he wants to lift your burden, mom, today. He wants to lift the burden of a single mom today and a busy working mom. And he wants to help you know that burdens are lifted at Calvary. That's the sense of understanding that this woman had as she came into the Lord. The weeping was obvious, and uh, in fact, it was so pervasive that the word here for weeping can be translated wet. I mean, she wept so much that Jesus' feet were literally wet with her tears. You know, we don't see a lot in the way of repentance today. We don't see a lot of tears at an old-fashioned altar. We see people sometimes that walk away from the Lord and live an ungodly life, and then they just show back up at church as though nothing ever happened. But, you know, I truly believe that when we realize our sinful condition and when we realize the wonderful grace of Jesus, that often there will be a response like this woman had, just a response that is emotional, a response that is sacrificial when we come into the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. I remember the story of an unrepentant shoplifter from years ago, and he wrote a letter to a department store, and he said, he said, I've just become a Christian and I can't sleep. I feel guilty. He said, so here's the $100 that I owe you from many years ago. He signed his name and then he added a little PS. He said, if I still can't sleep tomorrow night, I'll send you the rest of the money. You know, sometimes we repent of just enough to soothe our conscience. But this woman wasn't holding back. I mean, she was just opening up her heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, true repentance never exists except in conjunction with faith. And uh, uh, while there, wherever there is true faith, there is true repentance as well. This woman experienced a true heart of faith and repentance for the Lord Jesus Christ. We see her as a sinful woman in the midst of this crowd. But I want you to notice also in the Bible this morning, there is a self-righteous host at this event. Did you see that in verse 39? The Bible says, Now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. Now isn't that amazing? Jesus had said many times uh, that he came not uh, to, uh, to visit those that were whole, uh, but those that were sick and needy and sinful. And here, the Pharisee is going to criticize Jesus for helping the sinner. And I have found over the years that oftentimes that uh, even as a church with a bus ministry and a soul winning ministry and trying to reach anybody and everybody, sometimes there will be someone that will complain about that. But Jesus came for every sinner, not just one kind of sinner, not just one nation, not just one culture. He came for all people. And we see this Pharisee as a hyper-judgmental, self-righteous man. He lacked spiritual insight. Uh, he had uh, blind spots, if you will. 
things that he wasn't seeing very well. His first blind spot was that he assumed that Jesus was ignorant of who the woman was. And, uh, and yet Jesus is all-knowing. He knew exactly who she was. And he says in this verse 39, what manner of woman she is. Friend, Jesus knows what manner of person you are and I am. And that's the great thing about his grace. He still loves us. He loved this woman even where she was. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so here was a false assumption by this uh, self-righteous man. And then the second false assumption was he assumed that he was better than she was. He assumed somehow that he had a better place. He says of her, she is a sinner in verse 39. And what we should always say when observing the sinful consequences of our culture, and there is much sin in our culture, and there are many sinners around us. But what we should always say as Christians is this, but for the grace of God, there go I. Because we are all sinners. We all fall short of the glory of God. And yet he was filled with self-righteousness. Luke chapter 18 and verse 9 says, And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. You see, false religion always finds righteousness within themselves. And the legalist is always uplifting himself or his accomplishments or his self-righteousness or his associations. And this Pharisee thought that because he was a Pharisee, because he had memorized verses, because he was the host of the party, that he was somehow better than that sinful woman. Well, we all know that the ground is level at the cross. And we see here today that Jesus loved the Pharisee, he loved the sinful woman, and he loved everybody in between because he came not to be a sacrifice for some, but for all who would believe on his finished work and on his precious name. And so we're thankful today uh, that God loves us in this way. This man was lacking spiritual insight. Uh, I read not long ago in USA Today regarding the challenges of mothers, and the article said nearly half of moms admit they're jealous of seeing other moms' lives on social media. Can I just say to you moms today, Let's not be jealous of other moms because oftentimes the grass is not greener on the other side. Let's not consider ourselves less or someone else more. Let's remember from this woman that Jesus loves all women equally. He loves all people equally. And don't let the devil put you on one kind of a level or another. Remember that your worth is based upon your birth. And if you've experienced the new birth of Jesus Christ, then he knows and loves you very much. Well, this man lacked spiritual insight. He was a self-righteous man. He also lacked spiritual compassion. Uh, Lee Robertson was the great pastor of Chattanooga, Tennessee. He was preached here in our church before he went to heaven. And he often said, compassion is your hurt in my heart. And we find no compassion in this Pharisee's heart. He wasn't empathetic for this woman at all. Simon himself, this was the name of the Pharisee, he was a man that was filled with pride. He was focusing on the sins of this woman that were known, that were public, forgetting that he had many sins of his own, sins that may not have been as well known, but that God saw, no doubt. And so Jesus gives him a parable of forgiveness. And notice in verse 40, Jesus says, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And Simon said, Master, say on. He said, there was a certain creditor which had two debtors, and the one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when he, they had nothing to pay, uh, the, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him the most? And Simon answered and said, I suppose he that was forgiven the most. And he said, thou hast rightly judged. Now, here we see an illustration is given regarding a debt. The Bible speaks of the debt in the terms of 500 pence. This was the principal silver coin of the Roman Empire. And so Jesus uses something that is common for the Pharisee to understand, the ancient uh, coinage of Denarius. And, and he says to him, he says, uh, if one man owed 500 pence and another had 50 and they both were forgiven, which one would be more loving and appreciative of that gift? 
And he said, well, the one that was forgiven for the most. And he answered correctly. And Psalm 103 and verse 3 says, Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. You see, what Jesus was illustrating was the fact that he had power to forgive anyone's sins, no matter what their past had been. And that often those who have been forgiven from some great difficulty uh, are more grateful for the grace of God. And so it was that this woman would rise with great forgiveness and gratitude in her heart. John Newton was a slave trader and a heathen man before his conversion. You've heard me speak of him before. The great writer of many hymns, including Amazing Grace, before he was saved, he did not live a godly life. He was in the human trafficking business, if you will. Not, not a man that was faithful, not a man that, that was kind or compassionate. But when he came to the Savior, he fell into the grip of God's grace. And because of that grace, he loved the Lord and loved everyone in, with whom he came into contact and ultimately wrote the wonderful song, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. You know, years ago, I visited the church that John Newton pastored, and I'll never forget that day in the little village of Olney, England, and I walked into the church, and I saw the listing of all the pastors and quickly looked back to the era of John Newton. I saw the stained glass and those stone walls, and I tried to envision what it must have been like to hear, to hear him preach about the grace of God. There was over in the corner a pulpit, and it said John Newton's pulpit, and around it was storage and boxes, and, and it appeared to me that uh, the man, possibly his message, had been neglected in that particular local building. But I'm so thankful that that song has transcended throughout the world and that that message of grace is a message that is still offered today for any woman, for any man that would come humbly and repentantly to the Lord. His grace is poured out upon them. And this Pharisee was learning from the Lord Jesus this day that great sin is a candidate for great grace. And it's so wonderfully important to see it. And so we learn today from a sinful woman and a self-righteous man that God's grace is sufficient for everyone. And that brings us to a final thought this morning. And I want you to see not only the sinful woman, not only the self-righteous man, but I want you to see a forgiving Savior. Notice what Jesus says to this woman in, as we begin now looking at this in verse number 44. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seeing thou, seest thou this woman, I entered into thine house, thou gavest me no water for my feet, but thou washed my feet, but she washed my feet with tears, and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, uh, since the time I came, has not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Now, in essence, the Pharisee, who was caught up in his self-righteousness, failed to recognize who was in his house that day. Failed to recognize that Jesus was God in the flesh, that Jesus could forgive sin, that Jesus could lift burdens. He saw Jesus as a teacher, as a religious man, but this woman saw him as the Savior and as the Lord, Christ the Anointed. This woman's reputation caused the Pharisee to become very nervous, but Jesus simply offered forgiveness. I want you to see that Jesus, first of all, observed her faith. Moms and dads, boys and girls, Jesus sees your faith too. And the Bible says in verse 44, he turned to the woman and said, seest thou this woman? In other words, he says, Simon, I see her faith. I have observed her faith. Uh, it was a common courtesy. Uh, in Bible times uh, to have someone wash the guest's feet or at least provide water so that their feet could be washed. It was a formal greeting perhaps to kiss a guest when they arrived. And Jesus looks at this Pharisee and says, she greeted me and you did not. She gave to me and you did not. She repented and you will not. She served 
and you will not. She worshiped and you will not. You see, Jesus says of his disciples, you will know them by their fruit. And we understand today that this woman was showing forth what we sometimes call the fruit of repentance. Uh, it was more than a talk. It was a walk. And though this was all new to her, it was so wonderful for Jesus Christ to observe. Now, I would say to you this morning that Jesus is not indicating to us that her tears saved her. Uh, we're not saved by our works. Uh, but those tears were an evidence of a heart that had been changed. Uh, her faith was in Christ who saved her. In fact, notice in verse 50 of this same text, the Bible says, And he said unto the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. Now, he's not speaking about faith in faith. He's not speaking about just believing in general. But she had faith in Jesus Christ. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And this woman knew that Jesus was her only hope, and she put her faith in him. And yes, her faith was evidenced with tears and with sacrifice. It was a genuine faith she was expressing in the Lord. Colossians 1 and 14 says it this way, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of our sins. And so here was a woman who saw Jesus Christ as the Savior, and she put her faith in him. Now, faith in Christ is a choice. Thank God for many Christian mothers who have put their faith in Christ. And there are many today who scoff at faith in Christ and who scoff at the Christian family, but not Jesus. He's the originator of the Christian family. He is the author and finisher of our faith. I heard about a Christian lady who did quite a bit of traveling, and she got on a plane one day, and sometimes she was uh, just uh, a little bit nervous at flying, and so she would often take her Bible, and she would open up her Bible, and she would uh, read through the Bible, and this lady sat one day next to a man who had a, a haughty, proudful attitude. He looked at the woman. He looked at the Bible. He said, you don't believe that book, do you? And uh, the lady replied, well, of course I do. And he said to the lady, well, what about that guy that was swallowed up by the whale? Surely you don't believe that, do you? She said, yes, I believe in the account of Jonah. And uh, he said, well, how do you suppose he was uh, all that time in the whale? She said, I don't really know. She said, I'll ask him when I get to heaven. And he said to the woman, well, what if he isn't in heaven? Then she said, you'll have to ask him. You see, she was a woman who had her confidence in the word of God. And this was a woman who had her confidence in Jesus Christ. And Jesus observed her faith. And I want you to notice, secondly, Jesus forgave her sin. Uh, you see, this is the premise of the message this morning. Only Jesus can forgive sin. The Baptist church cannot forgive sin. The Catholic church cannot forgive sin. You cannot wash your own sin away. Only Jesus can forgive our sin. Jesus says in verse 50, thy sins be forgiven thee. Luke chapter 5 and verse 21, and the scribes and Pharisees began to reason, saying, who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only. You see, the Pharisee had not come to that point in his mind. Simon did not understand who Jesus was. This woman understood. This was the Christ. And he can forgive my sin. And he can relieve my heavy burden. And I want to be yoked up with Jesus Christ. The Pharisee was failing to realize who can forgive sins but God only. This is God in the flesh. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father. And that's who Jesus Christ is, God in the flesh. And because of that, he alone can forgive our sin. His blood alone can wash our sin away. And so God can forgive our sin. And God offers forgiveness not on the merit of the ointment she gave, not on the merit of the tears that she shed. She was forgiven because of her faith in the only one who could forgive her sin, and that was Jesus Christ. Romans 5 and 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God 
through our Lord Jesus Christ. So I want to speak for a moment to every mom and dad and to each of you that are with us today. Do you have peace with God? Has there been a time in your life when you have been completely forgiven for sin, past, present, and future? I'm not asking you if you know verses like the Pharisee. I'm not asking you if you go to church sometimes when you can, when we're not social distancing. The question is not how much religion do you have. The question is, do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? None of us would doubt the sincerity of this woman coming to the Lord Jesus here in Luke's Gospel. She came with a heart of repentance and faith. Has there ever been a time in your life when you recognized that you were a sinner? And as a sinner, you came to the Lord and said, Lord Jesus, I confess to you that I am a sinner. And I ask you to come into my heart to be my Savior, to forgive my sin. Now, he may not be with us physically today like he was for this sinful woman. But through his word and by faith, we can trust in the atoning work of Jesus Christ. The fact that as the Son of God, he came. He lived a perfect life. He then died on the cross and shed his blood for our sin. And when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, we can be saved. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. And this woman walked into the courtyard lonely and burdened with her sin. And because she believed on Christ, he said, Thy sins have been forgiven thee. And she walked out of that courtyard with burdens lifted and sins forgiven. And before you turn off your television, your computer, your tablet today, you could have your burden of sin lifted if you would but believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And right now, I want to say to moms and guests and friends, if you've never received Christ, I want to encourage you to simply right now pray a prayer like this. Dear Lord Jesus, I confess to you that I am a sinner. And I ask you, Lord, to forgive me. I'm trusting you. I know I'm not worthy, but I believe you are worthy. So I ask you to be my Savior and give me a home in heaven someday. Would you pray that prayer right now? Would you accept Christ as your Savior now? Would you put faith in him as the woman did? Just simply say to the Lord, Dear Lord Jesus, I confess to you that I am a sinner. I ask you now to come into my life to forgive my sin. I'm trusting you and you only to be my Savior and to give me a home in heaven. If you pray that prayer, Christ will come into your heart as you express faith. Just like the woman expressed faith, if you'll express your faith in Christ. And if you've prayed that prayer to trust Christ as your Savior, I want to encourage you, uh, if you would, just email us with the email address on the screen or text us. Uh, some of the screens have a button to say, I've accepted Christ. Your email comes automatically. Would you let me know that you've accepted Christ as your Savior? Oh, if you will, Jesus says to you, like he said to this woman, thy sins be forgiven thee. You'll experience the burdens being lifted by the power of Calvary. And moms, if you've already been saved, may I close today's message by saying to you, God loves you. Jesus died for you. There's no pecking order with God. Every one of you is precious in his sight. And God is still worthy of our sacrifice and service. And so whether it's this woman who is a representative of a new believer, or whether it's Mary who knew the needful thing, to sit at Jesus' feet. I want to encourage you moms in the midst of your busy, busy life to take time this week with Jesus, to worship him, to draw upon his strength, to thank him for his forgiveness, to know that he loves you and he is for you. And when we as husbands and children forget to express it, always know that there's a faithful God who loves you and gave his son just for you. Well, what a joy and privilege today that we've had to open the Bible and to learn about God's love for this dear woman and for each and every one of us. And I want to say, friend, if you have never accepted Christ and you still have questions, be sure to contact us today. 
by way of the email. Moms, if you have a burden or you have a question about raising your family for the Lord or something that we can help you with, there's a place where you can contact us as well because we want to be a blessing to you through this season. It's my prayer.